Welcome to our new show, Region Locked. In this show, we're going to explore games that never made it to the United States. We'll detail what's in the games and try to shed some light on why they went unpublished stateside. Software that isn't published in the US tends to be part of an obscure franchise, but the title we're covering today comes from one of gaming's best known series, Pokemon. The Pokemon franchise exploded during the 1990s. As with most popular series, Pokemon's creators tried to capitalize on the success of the anime and video games by creating a trading card game. Since the first generation of Pokemon games had already established a battle system, the trading card game's rules took inspiration from the Game Boy games. The card game launched in Japan in 1996 and reached the United States around two and a half years later. It took America by storm and became a trend amongst the nation's kids. During this two and a half year gap, a brand new Pokemon game was released in Japan based on the trading cards. A year after this game came out in its home country, it was translated and published in the West as Pokemon Trading Card Game for the Game Boy. Due to the success of the game, a second title was created and released in Japan in 2001. Although many Western fans waited for the second game to be localized, it never made it to the West. Before we get into the details of the second game, we're going to talk a little bit about the first game. Just as the actual card game took inspiration from the original Pokemon games, so does the trading card video game. The player collects a deck of cards from a professor based on the elements of fire, water or grass. They must compete against various characters in the world. This includes a rival, eight club leaders based on different elemental types, and four card player grand masters. The player can also create their own deck with cards obtained throughout the game, and can save the various decks using computers. Although it borrowed many elements from the original games, the Pokemon trading card game also introduced ideas that became a standard for the series. One example is the ability to run by holding in the B button. This was introduced to the core series in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, but until the trading card game, no such ability existed for the series. The game featured digitized versions of real cards that were illustrated by Ken Sugimori, Mitsuhira Elita, and Keiji Kinabuchi. There are a total of 228 cards cards featured within the title, but some of these cards couldn't be obtained without the use of the card pop feature. Card pop allowed two players to link up their games using the Game Boy Color's infrared function, which would provide both players with a random card similar to the mystery gift system found within the core titles. The title was created by Hudson Soft and originally announced under the name of Pokemon Card. The project's western release was initially delayed by two months. It's believed that this was done so Nintendo could focus their marketing on Pokemon Stadium for the Nintendo 64. When when the game did release, it came with a promotional card featuring Meowth. This card was only available with the game, and wasn't sold anywhere else in the West. In Japan, a special legendary Dragonite was given away instead, and it was made exclusive for the region. While most cards appear within the title, two were missing, Electro from the base set and Ditto from the fossil set. This was due to difficulties getting their abilities to work within the game's engine. As a result, a new card for both of the Pokémon was made exclusively for the game. The Electro card, however, was later made available from an online card shop. The game features two cameo appearances in the characters of Mr. Ishihara and Imakuni. These are both the president and CEO of the Pokemon company, Tsunakazu Ishihara, and Pokemon anime musician Tomoaki Imakuni. Imakuni's appearance with a question mark resembles that of his stage name. The Pokemon trading card game was praised and had successful sales. Over 600,000 copies were sold in Japan by the end of 1999, and around 1.5 million copies copies were sold in America in its first year. With the growing popularity of the trading card game, it seemed only inevitable that there would be a sequel. With several expansions to the physical card game being made, there was plenty of content to use for another game. Also developed by Hudson, the sequel was titled Pokemon Card GB2 Here Comes Team GR. The game boasted several new features and improvements over the previous title. This included being able to choose your gender, an extensive training mode to educate new players, and a diagnosis system that let the player know how effective their deck would be in use. Many new cards had been published since the first game released. These additional cards were added to the game, bringing its total up to 445 cards. While this number is higher than the original, a large number of cards were left out. The game 
story was also expanded, and didn't simply revolve around the player collecting club medals and defeating the Grand Masters. A new rival team appears called Team Great Rocket. Led by King Bilalichi, the team kidnaps a number of the club masters and has stolen almost everybody's Pokemon cards. It's the player's role to save the Club Masters and defeat Team Great Rocket in their headquarters. As a direct sequel, the game not only allows the player to explore the island found in the first trading card game, but also a second island called GR Island. This made the game's world seem much more fleshed out and improved upon the relatively short length of the first game. New graphical features were added too. Opponents now had a variety of expressions after a duel commenced, such as being happy when winning or sad when losing. Another change was the introduction of coins. These coins are awarded after winning a club match, as opposed to the medals found in the first game. They can even be used to replace the coin shown during coin flips throughout the game. A noticeable difference between the two games is how the entranceway of each gym is presented. Originally, each gym simply had a different symbol to define it. In the second game, the entire room is themed after the gym's elemental type. Another new feature was a game center, which featured several mini-games. These included a game where the player player has to flip a coin and land it on heads over and over and over again. Doing it ten times over unlocks a Mew card. There are also slot machines which have a bonus game attached to them. Unlike in the core series, the slot machine plays itself and has no user input for stopping the reels. As you can see here, we tried many times to get the three rainbow icons to line up so that we could play the bonus game, however we simply couldn't do it. These minigames would grant tokens to the player and they could be traded for additional cards. While the previous game featured connectivity through the use of the Game Boy's link cable, it isn't possible to connect the original trading card game to the sequel. Battles and trading between generations was a highly praised feature of the core series of Game Boy games, and was expected to be in the second card game too. As a result, when players tried to perform a card pop between the first and second card games, several issues occurred. This included glitches like the game's freezing, or the data from the first game being completely lost. The card pop was once again one of the only ways of obtaining two cards within the game. Lugia and Here Comes Team Rocket. Similar to the previous title, a trading card was made to promote the game, Great Rocket's Mewtwo. The card was planned to be bundled with the game, but was packaged with the special edition Celebi Game Boy Advance instead for unknown reasons. Pokemon Card GB2 didn't release in Japan until March 28, 2001, which was a week after the launch of the Game Boy Advance. This was problematic for the original Game Boy as a platform, as the introduction of new hardware usually means the death of a previous device. The first trading card video game took years to be localized, and the sequel was literally twice its size. The Game Boy Advance released in North America just three months after it came out in Japan, so even if the game was localized at breakneck speed and only took a year to come to the West, it still would have been published on a dying platform. Although the game would have likely seen respectable sales figures, Nintendo probably cut their losses in order to focus on the development and marketing of new Game Boy Advance games. The success of their new hardware would have been far more important to them than the success of a single game. If a console doesn't sell well at launch, it may lack support from other companies, and a lack of games could trigger a snowball effect of poorer and poorer sales on the platform. Did you also know that Evolving Pokemon almost wasn't included in Pokemon Go, or that the game started out as an April Fool's joke? For more Pokemon trivia, check out the Did You Know Gaming episode on Pokemon Go by clicking the window on screen. Don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming for more facts and trivia. My name is Daz, and together with my friend Greg, we make Region Locked. If you're interested, we're going to be live streaming the first Pokemon trading card game over on Twitch for a few hours after this video goes live. A link will be in the description below. Uh, if this video has been out for a while, why not follow me and Greg on Twitch anyway. Uh, we stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Special thanks goes out to Artemis251 for his work on an English fan translation patch for the Pokemon trading card game too. 